doesn't make sense. Not everything in this side of the business makes sense, but that's just the reality. We see a lot of that. So um, even if it's the car payments less than the, the other one, there's so many circumstances where you'd think, hey, why is this even an issue? So um, to answer your question, David, if you can show that your son's been paying the car for the last 12 months, you're good to go. If it hasn't been 12 months, it's going to be your debt. And then hopefully that self-employed um, circumstance made some sense to some people who are in that situation. So we, we see it come up a lot and um, frustrating, but that's just the way the under uh, underwriting guidelines work at the moment. So hopefully that helped. Hey, Dom, do we have another question teed up? We do. We have Susan that left this for us on the hotline. She's asking, we are building a new home and our builders now trying to raise the price. Is this even legal? They offered to let us cancel, but we want to buy the house. This seems illegal. Is it? Hey, Susan. So, wow. Yeah. And we're seeing this happen. Um, now I haven't personally experienced this, um, but you hear me talk all the time about the the group of agents and mortgage professionals that we network with to try to stay in touch with everything industry wide. So nothing catches us off guard. We're hearing more and more of this happening in the marketplace. Um, and you have to read the contract. There are clauses in the contract that, and it's not in every builder's contract. So it's, it's, case by case, but we've seen it happen. We're seeing more of it. And if it's in the contract tract that the builder can escalate because of whatever the circumstance is in this instance, it's most likely construction costs. Um, it could, and again, legal, I'm going to direct you to an attorney. Always, always, always. I'm not giving you legal advice. I'm just telling you what I'm seeing and hearing as um, the industry is reporting, if you will. And I'm hearing a lot of this lately where the builders are citing uh, increase in material costs and labor. And because of that, they're either offering to let you out of the contract or they're asking you to pay an increased price. So I'm not in the position to offer or uh, offer an answer if it's legal or not. But uh, I do know that it is in builders contracts and I am of the mind that if you sign the contract and it's in the contract, it most likely um, is there for, for a reason and is probably defensible or the builder, builder wouldn't have put it in there to begin with. So um, it certainly is frustrating. It's not fair. Um, but I think also, too, what's happening is I know we have a tendency to say greedy builder, greedy builder, greedy builder. Um, I think some of it's legit. I think some of them have suffered some serious increases in construction costs and they might be losing money or breaking e breaking even at that contracted price that they negotiated with you, you know, six, nine, 12 months ago. Um, and purely from a business decision on their end, whether they lose money and sell you the house or they break even and sell you the house, which essentially is losing money, right? Because they're in business to make money. Um, they're going to mark the house up based on their their increased in unforeseen costs along the way. So I I'm really sorry to hear that. I don't uh, envy the circumstance. I would call an attorney if you need an attorney. I can probably refer you to somebody. Um, but, yeah, I would talk to an attorney just to have them digest that contract. And maybe there's something in the contract that allows you to ask the builder to document the increases. Maybe you can negotiate the increase and say, okay, if you're asking for, and I'm guessing because you didn't tell us, you know, 20, 30, 40,000 more, show us how you got to that number before we just agree to pay it. I don't know if that's an option, but hey, I'm really sorry that's happening to you, but we are hearing that happen more and more in this particular market as prices are getting the builders just like they're getting the rest of us. They're paying more for everything too. So anyway, on the other side of this break, we're going to keep uh, diving into your questions. Shoot those questions to us, 561-291-8569. That's 561-291-8569 or www.mr.mortgage. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com www.reallygreatagents.com 
Here's another five-star review. We kept our business above water with credit cards during the pandemic. I'm glad we did, business is better than ever. But I didn't want to be a slave to those credit card payments. I called Mark about the REC loan he advertises. Long story short we did a REC refinance and paid off everything, even the car. Now we only have the mortgage payment. We're saving a bunch every month. Yes, we are happy to recommend Mark and the Mr. Mortgage team. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now, 561-291-8569. All right, we are back, and you heard the man. 561-291-8569 is how you get your questions to us, either via your voice or a text. Dom is manning the hotline, and he'll get your questions on the air. Or if you want to get on the air with us, um, he'll do that for you too, but you got to call 561 291 Eight five six nine, or visit us online at www.mr.mortgage, www.mr.mortgage. So we are going to keep this party rolling. Hey, Dom, what do we have question wise? Uh, we have Jessica who sent in a text. Jessica's asking, when does changing real estate agents make sense? We've made several offers and our agent doesn't seem to be getting it done. Any advice? Wow, Jessica, that's a tough one, right? Because it's hard right now for the offers to get accepted. Um, I don't, I can't answer that as a as a general rule of thumb. If you if you still believe that your agent's a good agent, that they have your best interest at uh, in in their heart, they're putting your interest forward. Um, I think you should stick with them. Now, if you feel like they're misrepresenting you or they're giving you bad advice or they're putting you, um, in jeopardy, they're, they're, they're making, they're suggesting offers that make you uncomfortable either financially or otherwise, then maybe it's time to change. But I wouldn't blame the agent on offers not getting accepted because it's super competitive out there right now. And we're seeing, you know, people making three, four, five, six, seven offers before finally getting that one um, offer accepted. Super frustrating. I don't know that I would blame your agent um, right out of the box on that one, but I can understand your frustration. And speaking of agents, you always hear me talking about, you know, the need for a really great agent. Um, and I'm happy to get you in touch with one if you need one. Um, Jessica, I'd, you know, I'd like you to explore that relationship you already have before you jump ship. Um, if that's the only thing that's frustrating you about that person. Matter of fact, I um, speak on a panel every Tuesday at two o'clock. Um, there's there's me and three other um, mortgage professionals from other areas of the country. And we do a open forum live Q&A for real estate agents all over the country. And I threw out a question to the panel and to the audience just out of curiosity, who has had the experience of the most consecutive offers with the same client, same agent and same mortgage professional involved before a transaction was accepted? Now, I was expecting to hear 15, 17, and I did. Some people were 11. A lot of people seemed to be six to eight. That seemed to kind of be the magic window. But in this, and I'm shouting Jasmine out in particular, and um, she's a rock star. But Jasmine stood up and said, or raised her hand and said, 73 offers over two years before that FHA offer got accepted. So, man, that's a soldier right there. If you've got somebody on your team that's willing to fight through 73 offers to get you accepted, that's definitely somebody worth um, sticking with. And, man, what a celebration for that um this particular client, uh, Jasmine, told the the story. Single mom, nurse. I mean, all of the the heartstrings were tugged with this particular story. They hung in there after after seventy three offers. So, I encourage you if your agent seems to be doing a good job, you believe that they're um, they're giving you good advice. If your only frustration is that your offers aren't getting accepted, I'd hang in there. But um, as always, if you're looking for a really great agent. Um, 
I'm happy to direct you to one. So hopefully that helps. Um, I know the market's crazy out there. It's super frustrating, but hang in there. Hopefully you're not that 73. Hopefully you're that six to eight person. But uh, anyway, um, yeah, it's a, it's frustrating, but moving along, I don't know if we have any other questions teed up. I see Dom kind of giving me the signal there. What do we have? We have another text question. This is from Elizabeth. Elizabeth is asking, we are selling by owner and have an FHA offer. Is there a downside for us to take this offer? Wow. So no, Elizabeth, I'm going to say no, 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 there's not. Assuming that the price is what you want it to be and assuming that they're, um, that they are, um, underwritten and ready to close. It's a, it's a good solid approval. Um, from your standpoint as the seller, the only hangups on an FHA transaction could be property condition, right? So if there are, you know, no GFI outlets in the kitchen, the inspector might call that out and require there to be GFI outlets in the kitchen. You know, you can't have an unprotected outlet next to a sink in your backsplash in the kitchen. And some of the older homes didn't have GFIs and weren't upgraded. It's usually an inexpensive repair but there's a there's a high likelihood that a um, appraiser or an in- inspector will call that out. That will have to get um, upgraded. Then one other thing that FHA inspections te- typically call out is chipping paint, especially if the home is built. I think it's before 74 or 72. Don't hold me to that. It's in the 70s um, when homes were painted with lead paint. And there were health hazards with children eating chipping paint off the windowsills. So FHA, because it's a government insured program, requires there to be no um, health hazards. Chipping paint is one of them. Uh, One of the other things that is that you need to take into consideration if you're on well and septic, um, FHA requires the distance between the well and septic to be confirmed. They have minimum setback requirements. Um, They don't want you drinking poopy water. You know, it makes sense. But it does need to be called out on the survey that the distances are met. So um, those are the big things that I see people um, unprepared for on an FHA offer. If the house is sound and in good condition, none of that should be an issue. Um, There is a little bit of misconception around an FHA appraisal that it's harder to get through. Most of it's because of what I just mentioned, those kind of extra things that are being uh, looked at and the safety issues that are being called out. Um, if the home doesn't meet the appraised value, um, that FHA appraisal is attached to your home for a period of time, um, meaning that address is in the FHA database. So if the home doesn't appraise and the next person makes an FHA offer and that first appraisal is going to be the number you're stuck with, even if the second appraisal is higher because it's attached to your your property. Um, other than that, if the house is in good condition, the price is where you need it to be and you think it's going to appraise, I would not hesitate to take an FHA offer. And they can even buy it if it doesn't appraise. They can pay over, um, but you want to make sure they have the cash to do that. So I am a big fan of the FHA product because it helps a lot of first-time home buyers enter the marketplace. And in this market, anything we can do to get that first um, person in the into the home ownership cycle I think it's in all of our advantage to do that. If the price is where you need it to be to sell that home, um, I would not hesitate to give that person an opportunity. And uh, if you don't have an agent advising you, if you're trying to do this by yourself, give me a shout or um, shoot me an email. I'll be happy to review the offer. Uh, I mean, not the offer, the approval, and just give you my opinion if they've gone through the process far enough. I'm not going to try to sway them to switch lenders, but I can just give you an opinion that, yes, this looks to be um, run through the underwriting system. They've got the, the, the this is a good approval. Um, I'm happy to do that for you, but uh, I encourage you, if it, if it makes sense financially, to give that FHA offer um, a shot. Because honestly, we need that first time home buyer in the market because Without that first-time home buyer, there's no move-up buyers. And without move-up buyers, nobody goes and buys the McMansion. And then if you don't make that transition, you're not able to sell for ca- for cash or, or sell for a big um, equity cash out and come down here to Florida and pay cash for your dream house. At some point, you had to be that first-time buyer. So that FHA product works really well for them, and I would encourage it. So also, too, if you're thinking of buying with an FHA loan, there's a lot of flexibility in that program that people aren't aware of. You can go and buy a duplex and live in one side and rent the other side out. You can buy a fourplex, actually, and live in one and rent the other three. 
Um, I was talking to an agent in Jacksonville. 